Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm talking about warring mercury in cancer, which is going to be from 20th of June to uh, 26th of August. Yes, it's a long transit in cancer. Mercury will have two wars with uh, Mars and Venus and long stay actually uh, with Mars uh, uh, it, a conjunction in cancer. And then uh, it will also retrograde and it will go through Gandanta. So it continues to be uh, in a stressful condition. Hello, I'm Komela Sutton and today I'm talking about mercury in cancer. And we've been following mercury for the last uh, year or so. And you see that how it has uh, very fast transit through signs and then it goes uh, slow uh, through the signs. So now uh, after going uh, fast in um, Aries, Taurus, uh, uh, Gemini, it is suddenly going to slow down in uh, Cancer and will be in Cancer uh, right up to 26th of um, August. So the big story of uh, Mercury in Cancer is that it is going to have a long influence of Mars and it will uh, go into war with Mars. Then it is going to go into war with um, uh, Venus and uh, then it is uh, going to uh, be combust, it is going to be retrograde uh, and finally go through Gandanta. So this is a long time in Cancer. Uh, it's not a totally easy combination for um, Mercury. Uh, Mercury is uh, in a moon sign and according to the rules of Jyotish, uh, Mercury is not comfortable with the moon uh, because moon is uh, cancer is more intuitive, nurturing, uh, emotional, and Mercury is rational. It wants to ask questions. It wants to, uh, you know, uh, say, show me the evidence. It doesn't believe in intuition. So when it goes into the sign of uh, cancer, it feels uncomfortable. Also, according to the Puranic stories, uh, moon is the father of Mercury and Mercury hates the moon. Moon is fine with Mercury. So um, therefore, uh, this uh, kind of uh, intuitive mind and uh, rational mind is it and clash here. So of course, Mercury will be in Cancer, so it gets influenced by it. So it will be kind of developing a more nurturing quality. It will be dealing with that as well. And then uh, through this transit, at least for um, the uh, July part of the transit, uh, Moon is going to be involved in two eclipses, uh, 2nd uh, of July and 16th, 17th of July. So the underlying condition is not so easy for uh, Mercury. And uh, then from uh, uh, you know, it's uh, going to retrograde in July as well. So all kinds of complex aspects are there. So let's look at each thing step by step. Uh, so the first thing is that Mercury on 20th of June uh, leaves uh, uh, Gemini where it should have had a rest time to relax. But Gemini was uh, full of drama because Rahu was there, Mars was there. And so uh, Mercury did not get a time to rejuvenate rest and it has come uh, with struggling and uh, warring with Mars in Gemini to come into a uh, cancer. And uh, uh, so a few days later, 22nd, Mars comes into cancer. Now, according to uh, Vedic astrology, when uh, planets are in one sign, they are in conjunction. Basically, say if somebody was in this room with me, uh, they would be influencing me. So Mars remains with Mercury all the way till uh, 8th of August. So Mercury, Mars are in a uh, tight conjunction and then they go into a looser conjunction. And Mercury to start with in Cancer starts pulling away from 
uh, Mars. But then, uh, because it's going to retrograde on 7th of July, its speed slows down. So you'll see around 5th of July onwards, Mercury speed slows down. So Mars catches up. And so the day Mercury is going retrograde, in fact, uh, that is the day that Mars uh, is uh, conjoined with Mercury. And I'm just going to look up the dates. Uh, so uh, Mars, Mercury, 7th to 9th are in a war. And I'm going to make a video about conjunctions and planetary wars. So uh, uh, you can um, listen to that as well. Uh, but so the uh, Mars, Mercury are in planetary war, 7th to 9th. On 7th, Mercury turns retrograde. And always we watch out for uh, retrograde. So the day uh, Mercury turns retrograde, it uh, throws up uh, confusion, uh, messes up with uh, communication, causes problems. And uh, then uh, Mercury starts moving backwards and uh, slowly it will um, calm down in um, the retrograde. But generally from 7th to 31st, Mercury will um, be uh, retrograde and therefore you have to watch the uh, communications angle. Now, after the ninth, Mars starts moving forwards and Mercury starts moving backwards. So their um, combination is lessened for now. They will have a third uh, conjunction later on in the year and a third war. Uh, and I will talk about that later. But this is quite, uh, so I would say uh, that 7th, 8th, ninth is very stressful and to watch out for it. Also, ninth there is a, a Rahu-Sun conjunction as well. So a lot of um, volatility in the planets uh, is there. Uh, so then uh, Mercury starts retrograding back and it will... Uh, in the meantime, after the 17th, Sun goes into uh, Cancer. And uh, so uh, Sun will uh, conjoin um, Mercury and therefore create a combustion. So uh, Mercury combust when uh, there is, uh, I'm putting a link on uh, combustion, but Mercury will combust and be very close to the Sun. And I've done a video on combustion, so you can uh, listen to that. And Mercury is going to combust from 14th to 27th. But its uh, intense combustion is on uh, 20th of uh, July. So uh, it is uh, like it, you feel burnt out intellectually. You know, the mind is exhausted. Mercury is now traveling very fast, but it's retrograde. And retrograde is always looking towards the past, pulling yourself back. So not really paying attention to what you're doing, how you're doing it. So that is another important factor with uh, Mercury going retrograde. And uh, so, and then in mix of all this combustion, uh, Venus uh, joins uh, Mercury in um, Cancer. And this is the second war that Mercury is having. And uh, this war is uh, uh, only a short war uh, it will be from 24th to 25th of July. Uh, sometimes I've noticed that Mercury-Venus war is not so difficult, but sometimes it can throw up uh, challenges and uh, just awareness of it is important. And uh, so these two wars that are taking place, uh, one uh, between Mars and Mercury, the second between Venus and um, Mercury. So Mars and Mercury war, uh, it's uh, in Sanskrit, the word is called Yudh war. Uh, so these wars uh, take place when the planets are within one degree of each other. And uh, the signs that get affected, uh, Mercury Mars war uh, will affect uh, Aries, Scorpio and Gemini Virgo. Of course, Gemini Virgo are affected regardless. And then the Venus uh, war uh, will be Taurus, Libra, and of course, Gemini, Virgo. And then, uh, you know, so the war is over. And then uh, there are dual influences on Mercury uh, of Venus, of the sun is there. 
uh, Mars is still there. So a lot of activity going on, a lot of people uh, giving different ideas, different uh, concepts of what to do. And then uh, what happens is that as Mercury is uh, moving towards the end of its retrogression, something quite beautiful happens at that time because Mercury moves back into uh, Gemini. And uh, as you know, with the retrograde planets class, that that means that this Mercury is Ativakri. Uh, it has changed signs, but actually as it is changing signs, it moves into uh, 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 last pada of Gemini, uh, which is uh, Vargotama, uh, which is nice. And uh, so for quite a few days, uh, Mercury will be Vargotama, first in Cancer, uh, Vargotama, and then going back, it will go into uh, Gemini Vargotama. And uh, Mercury did not really get advantage of Gemini because at the last um, time it was Vargotama in June, uh, it, there was uh, Mars was there and the Mars-Mercury first war was happening. So now uh, uh, on these dates, so uh, you see that Mercury uh, retrogrades back on 29th of July, dips back into um, uh, Gemini, and then it will go direct on 31st, and then till 2nd of August, it's in a sweet spot. So very nice. And if you're Virgo and um, uh, Gemini, then this is a good time uh, to take advantage of this energy because it is good and even for yourself, especially when Mercury goes direct. So it's just two days. Uh, but you know, a lot can happen in two days and you can plan something positive. And so Mercury's own sign, Vargotama, it will be in a, a short Mahapursha yoga for um, uh, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces by transit. So also check out the Mahapursha yoga trans, uh, uh, video I've done. So lots happening. And then Mercury is almost free to do its own thing. It goes direct in August. And then uh, as it is leaving um, uh, cancer, it causes Gandanta. And these Gandanta crossings are very common. And generally, you'll see that Sun, Mercury, Venus, they all cross that the same Gandanta at the same time. And this time, Mercury is not going to retrograde over Gandanta. It's not a long transit. Uh, the Gandanta is uh, from uh, 25th to 26th of August. So it's an unsettled time. Just to be conscious of it and be careful of this energy. Uh, so what do we uh, expect from this transit? Of course, the two signs, Gemini and Virgo, will be affected by it. And uh, so they need to be conscious, especially on the days of war and combustion. Now, whenever Mercury gets combust, it's time to uh, think about uh, uh, your health and are you overdoing things? Are you overthinking things? And all of us, you know, it's a reminder to us that we have burnt out thinking. So uh, maybe rest from thinking, doing something casual, just enjoying the nature, doing something simple. Now for Gemini, Mercury is in the second house, Dhana Bhava, wealth house. So that is a good uh, transit generally, but it's not comfortable in cancer. And of course, all the wars going on. So maybe you can think about uh, your uh, savings, what you're doing with it. And for Virgo, it is in the 11th house. So both of them are getting a money transit. That means one is about profit, uh, how you're going to profit with it, what you're going to do about it. But remember, this is not a totally comfortable transit for Mercury. There's a lot of outside influence of the sun, of uh, Mars. Uh, so, and it is not in a, it's a bit exhausted state. So to be conscious of that, uh, not to make any uh, 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 big decisions at this stage, uh, and um, and especially keep uh, aware of uh, the uh, Gandanta wars, combustion, retrograde. So a lot of things to be conscious of. So the nakshatra transits for Mercury will be 
Punavasu, Pushya, and uh, Ashlesha. Out of which Ashlesha will be the shortest transit, and because of its retrograde, uh, Mercury is going to go uh, first into Punarvasu, go to Pushya, retrograde in Pushya, come back to Punarvasu, then repeat the whole exercise. That means that it is very interested in um, uh, uh, these nakshatras and what these nakshatras stand for. And there is some revision going on, some uh, rethinking going on during the retrograde phase. From uh, 20, 20th to 23rd of June, Mercury is going to start it all in Punarvasu. Punarvasu means another home. And you may be thinking, I want to be somewhere else. I don't want to be here. But actually, this particular portion is quite good. It is Vargotama. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, ruled by Jupiter, Guru. Uh, it's uh, thinking on multiple dimensions. Uh, and then from that uh, time onwards, Mercury goes into Pushya. And it will remain in Pushya uh, for some time, right up to... Uh, 22nd of July, so 23rd of June, so one month in Pushya to start with. And this is where uh, Mercury is going to deal with uh, its uh, combustion. It's going to deal with its uh, war with uh, Mars, its war with uh, uh, Venus. So it's a, a kind of uh, unsettled energy. Now, Pushya means to flower. Uh, it is also ruled by um, its uh, Devata is Brihaspati and the ruler is Shani. Uh, but the Devata is very important. It's about knowledge and wisdom. But uh, Mercury is not in a mood for it because it is over pressurized, overworked at this stage. And it will go into Pushya and you may be very excited that you're doing something new. Then it retrogrades and it goes into war and two wars. Uh, so it is a time to... Uh, be conscious at this stage of Pushya, you are not making any big decision. So one month uh, in Pushya, and generally, as I said, Pushya is considered a very beautiful spiritual nakshatra. But uh, Mercury is not uh, necessary in a mood or able to take advantage of it at this time. And then uh, from uh, uh, 22nd of July, uh, Mercury goes into Punarvasu again. So now it is retrograding back to Punarvasu and will retrograde uh, uh, all through this retrograde of Punarvasu is all Vargotama. So in effect, even though Mercury is retrograding back, the Vargotama position by transit will help Mercury to um, enjoy the uh, 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 different aspects of Punavasu, uh, the multi multi dimensions, the nurturing energy, and I would say it's most important to nurture your intellect uh, and Gemini uh, Virgo to nurture yourself because you have a bit exhausted by now. So to nurture yourself and the Punavasu uh, being um, another home, it can be another way of thinking, another idea, and. Uh, uh, also, Punavasu is about making some intentions that where are you going, what are you doing? And then Mercury will station there uh, on 31st of July, uh, and it has now gone back into uh, 29th. It goes back into Gemini, still Vargotama, and then till uh, 2nd of uh, July, it stays in Gemini, and then it will move forward and um, uh, go into um, uh, Pushya, actually at, uh, at around 5th of uh, July. I'll make a note down uh, at the bottom. I thought it's moving Pushya on 2nd, but it's not correct. So it will be around 4th, 5th that it moves into um, you know, Pushya and then uh, back to Pushya till the 18th. Uh, so uh, now it is direct and it is making a decision about uh, going uh, 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 about knowledge, about study, about self-development. And the Guru Brihaspati is guiding uh, in a positive way. 
and uh, so uh, it, it is much more easier. And then um, Mercury goes into Ashlesha. Now, Ashlesha is very complicated for Mercury. And Ashlesha is 16th of August to um, uh, 26th of August. Why is it complicated for Mercury? Because Mercury doesn't like the secret knowledge, mysticism of Ashlesha. It's not always sure um, about what Ashlesha is about. Ash it, Mercury likes things that are very rational, very practical, and what they, it can understand and wants evidence for everything. Whereas Ashlesha is not able to give the evidence. So, uh, but it's a very mystical experience. And I personally think that one should be open to that. And so you should develop, learn from that energy. And at this stage, Mercury is not being bothered by anybody. Uh, there's no combustion, there's no war going on. So this is a time to slowly go uh, study something unusual, do some uh, mystical knowledge, secret knowledge. It can be on any subject. It can be philosophy, it can be spirituality. Ashlesha is the snake energy. Uh, it is uh, very much uh, about uh, secret knowledge, which was guarded by our ancients because they didn't want to fall into the wrong hands. So rather than being skeptical about it, uh, you should enjoy it. And as you're listening to my videos and interested in astrology, you are interested in these things. So uh, be open to it and not be critical of this situation uh, of Ashlesha. And finally, Mercury goes out of uh, Cancer uh, through a Gandanta. So that Gandanta of 25th, 26th of August is again a spiritual knot. And as the planets are all going through that Cancer Leo Gandanta, they're slowly unraveling the information. But that time is like being in a vortex in an unsettled day or two. So uh, watch out for 25th, 26th, and by 26th, Mercury is in Leo. Uh, so that is it. And again, uh, you know, learn from this transit, learn what Mercury is doing, and uh, uh, watch out for the complicated days and enjoy the good ones. So all the best and uh, check out my website, comela.com. Thank you very much.